What, sweetie? Of course we're going to give you legs. How can we not give you legs? You're the civilian liveried airwolf. The triple juice, the bell triple two. You need legs. We'll give you legs, won't we, Helly Geeks? Legends, choppers, heli geeks, and lovers of all things Bell Triple Two. Um, I don't know how long this episode's going to be because it's probably going to be over several weeks or months. Uh, so I don't know how long it's going to be. Uh, it will be a mix of video and photographs with a bit of uh, voiceover. Um, the aim really is for this one episode to be everything you need to know about fitting retractable landing gear to this wonderful scale uh, helicopter. Now there are lots of good uh, scale helicopter uh, pilots, engineers, talented people out there on the tube of you. But one person in particular who I have huge respect for in this hobby of ours, very, very talented and very, very knowledgeable, is John Salt. Uh, John Salt, look him up, uh, he's been around for a while and he's done some fantastic um, models. Uh, John Salt has done the smaller version of this, uh, the 600, and this is what he had to say about uh, building the 600. Hello folks, today as you can see we're talking scale, uh, specifically the uh, fun key uh, 50 or 600 size Bell 222 or Airwolf. A reoccurring question that I keep getting asked on my site uh, regarding scale builds is what is involved in the uh, Bell 222 or Airwolf 600 ESP mechanics, uh, fitting them, all that good stuff. And is it a hard build? Yes, you know what? Out of all the fun key uh, models in the 50 to 600 size range, or the 50 600, uh, the Airwolf is probably the hardest. Uh oh. Uh, main reason for that is the retracts, they're a real pain in the ass. Oh dear. But there's also a, a fair amount of fuselage modification. Not, not tons, but enough that it might scare a few people away or be quite challenging. Shit. Again, this all depends on your modeling experience. You know, if you're an experienced uh, RC modeler, either aircraft or uh, either airplanes or uh, helicopters, yeah, you know what, you're going to be able to tackle an Airwolf or a 222, no problem. Yes, John is absolutely right, of course he is. Um, fitting the retractable landing gear to the Bell 222 is probably one of the most complex things that you can do. Um, and that is because of the complexity of the servos and fitting them and aligning them, making sure the servo throws are correct in the transmitter. Um, it looks great, um, but actually the work that goes into that is a huge amount, which is why I said at the beginning, this video may be done over several weeks. When you buy this scale fuselage from Funky or JTEC models, the link is in the description uh, down below, and also a link to the video up uh, there. I think it's up there, or there, one or the other. Um, you can see the review on it there. But when you buy it, uh, you'll also be given the retractable landing gear here. Now, I know I'm at distance here, but I think you can see this is just a piece of wire. It's a strong piece of wire, but it's just a piece of wire, and it's not really in keeping with um, the Bell 222. These landing gear that I've got here, um, and I may cut to a photograph so you can see it more close up, these are called oleo struts, um, because there is a degree of suspension, as you can see. Um, but these ones I bought here, um, which are really good, well, um, you know, well made, well cut out, well CNC. Um, slight, these are slightly too big. These are 115 millimeters from the top to the center of the uh, wheel here. When actually that distance needs to be 75 millimeters. So they're too big. They won't come up into the side pod. So sadly, I'm not going to be able to use those. But I have got the right ones on route. To fit the landing gear inside the Bell 222, we need several component parts. We need servos. These are MIDI sized servos. 
Um, these are the Turnergy S331M analog servos, and I'm going with analog servos purely and simply so that if they do bind up, they're not going to draw current constantly um, from the power source. The power source, if you remember rightly, is going to be provided by the batteries on the helicopter in channel 7, um, with channel 8 being the uh, light channel. So you need three of those. Um, you need some cables, obviously. You need a couple of Y cables. Uh, you may or may not need a servo reverser for one of those because clearly if it's going to be on that side we're going to change it to that being on that side the servos needs to be reversed. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing that to be frank um, but the easiest way is via that servo reverser cable. Um, and um, yeah that's, uh, that's what we need and a great deal of patience and uh, some time. So um, wish me luck. All right, so when you get your um, your retracts here, two of these are at 90 degrees and one of these is at 95 degrees. And you need to make sure the 95 degree uh, retract is mounted in the nose. How do you tell that? Um, well, very simply, especially if you've lost the label as I have, uh, extend it out so it's fully locked like this. Extend it all the way out so it's fully locked out and then simply look at the bar. That's a bit bent. That's definitely 90 degrees. That's definitely 90 degrees. That is 95 degrees. And this is the one you want to mount in the nose. So front wheel is now in, or the front retract system is now in, and we've bolted it in. Um, and what we need to do now is we need to make sure that we can uh, make sure that the distance from the from the retract there to the first bend, if you like, this small uh, down part here, this uh, this shank, this leg, is the right distance in order that when the wheel folds in, just take it off of the lock you've got exactly the right amount of distance that clears the housing here so that the wheel sits in the fuselage. Okay, moving along to the uh, retracts for the side pods. Exactly the same principle. We're gonna screw the retracts in and then we're gonna adjust the length of the retracts so that the wheels clear the um, fuselage and sit inside the side pods. When you're putting the retract in the side pod, it's not gonna go in this way. Don't try and bully it in this way. Uh, it's simply not gonna go. Um, the way in which the retract goes in the side pod is very simple. Just slide it forward to the very back and then drop it in. Uh, it will then sit on top of the locating, uh, the locating lugs there and you can then screw it into place. A uh, quick word on the retracts provided by Funky. First of all, the bent knee goes forward um, and second of all, the wire or the landing gear should come on the outside of the wheel. So as we're gonna place this in here, um, and the set screw is in there, the grub screw is in there for us to tighten up. Um, you know, leave it in there for now, nice and loose, and um, just double check, and hopefully you can see this, but these retract systems have a lockout. There we go, so that's now fully locked out. So this isn't gonna fold in on itself. But as you push that in, this is where you want to line it up. Now, clearly we haven't lined it up and you can see it's all wobbly either side and it doesn't fit. But just a little bit of patience, as we did for the other side, just push it in millimetre by millimetre to get it where you want it and then lock it in position with that grub screw. So I've now fitted in the uh, retract to the side pod. I just want to show you something here if i can show you here 
So I'm going to pull the wheel out and you can see I've got a fair bit of space from the end of the wheel to the end of the side pod. Uh, but that's not actually what you should be working out for, for the distance um, from the retract um, where, the, um, where the screw, the grub screw goes in to hold it in place. It's actually the collet through the cutout. Now you can see there right above it, it's plenty of room, there's plenty of space, but actually I could probably move to the right a couple of millimetres and that's all it takes so that this wheel sits better in the side pod. Um, and the way in which I make that adjustment is by undoing that grub screw, which is in there, and just bringing this, this, uh, this landing gear out literally by a couple of millimetres. So let's see that. Okay, so I've made the adjustments. It was literally a couple of millimetres, but um, as I bring this up now, this wheel fits in this cutout, the, the collet fits in the cutout much, much better, and that's much more central when it's uh, exactly halfway um, halfway up. If we come around this side, and we can probably see that as I bring this up, this collet there is, you know, in the middle of the cutout. There we go, you can see it better there. And that's the way in which to measure it. Bring the collet, the collet up halfway and then secure it in when it's exactly halfway and then you'll get exactly the right distance that you need for the um, for it to be secured in via the grub screw inside the retract. Okay, and this is where we start with a lot of videos out on the internet let us down when it comes to building scale models and I'm going to try and give an explanation here. Here is a MIDI servo um the turner gs 1337m whatever i'll post a link down below but it's a 60 degree servo but can give you 180 degree throw but only on one side it'll only give you throw on one side in this case it's this side we can see there so if the throw is this side the servo works this side then it's this side that's got to be aiming towards uh, just put that in there it's this side that's got to be aiming towards the retract in order that we can connect a bar from here to the end of the retract so that the servo can then do the you know put the landing gear down and up the difficulty is putting that in here routing the cable creating a bar from the servo here uh, to the end of the retract um, and then timing it via our transmitter so that it puts just the, net, just the right amount of throw in to bring the gear up um, and to put the gear down. That is the difficult thing about retracks. Do I recommend you do all three at the same time? No. Do one at a time and take your time. Uh, you're not going to get it done in half an hour. It's going to take some time. Um, so uh, yeah, get ready. Bed in. Bed in. Okay, so we've finished with our square mini file here. Um, actually, get yourself a set of these um, these mini files. You can get them on eBay, a couple of quid. Uh, you're going to need them throughout. Um, we've got a nice little square channel there. It's the same width as the ribbon, so we should be able to fit the servo in there nicely. Okay, servo's in now. Uh, we've just got to secure that to the top. But the key thing is that channel we cut out there, really useful and enabled us to... Um, feed that cable down there and that's now nicer that wasn't pinched on the way down or anything like that so yeah take the time to cut that channel out um, and as I said time spent in preparation seldom wasted and now we can route this cable once we've secured this servo onto this top plate one of the reasons why people say working on the Bell 222 scale helicopter is particularly difficult when it comes to the retracks is because of this uh, the space that you've got to work in. We're looking at the um, at the port side, the left side, um, and we're looking at the retract that we've put in there. Um, and clearly you can see we've got next to no room whatsoever. The plate that we've got to fit in, um, which will go in like this, and difficult to show you and film at the same time, but I'll try. So a little notch goes in the cutout. you're feeling my pain aren't you there we go that's now in um, we'll have a look through the window perhaps we might have seen better there 
Yeah, so that cutout is now in there. Now you can see, I've already started, I've made a little notch um, where we're gonna have to cut out the cable, or cut out the route for the cable, just uh, just there. Um, so, uh, yeah, and you can see already, can't you, how difficult that's gonna be um, to be able to make the right sort of adjustments, etc. in there. Uh, bringing that out. And obviously our servo here, this is the servo we're gonna fit. Um, and uh, you know, the motion is up at the top here. There we go, the motion is at the top. So the servo is going to go um, in like that, basically. So the cutout here will enable this cable to, uh, to slide through and not get pinched. Then of course, we then got to mount it in there um, and then do the same the other side. Once we've done uh, that side, and once we've done this side, the port and the starboard side, left and right, red and green, once we've done these sides, we're gonna take it all back out again. Now that's right, we're gonna take it all back out again because um, these here, these ball joints, and these rods, and these caps are what we are going to mount onto the system to put it back in. The reason why we're doing all this first is preliminaries, really, is to make sure that it's all gonna fit, is to make sure that um, you know we've got it all aligned properly and everything else before we start focusing on the adjustment. Now, other people might have different ideas on why, uh, on, on how to do that, but that's how I'm going to do it. Um, so uh, let's, see. let's see how we get on. Okay, that's all the servos in, um, both sides there, and of course at the front, We've made sure that our um, that our uh, gear comes up and down nice and smoothly into the side pods and into the nose. What we're going to do now is um, we're basically going to fix these servos into position, um, and then we're going to strip it down again. That's right, we're going to strip it down, um, and that's when we're then going to fit the uh, the balls on the end of the retract. Um, and the rods, etc., and that's really where it starts to get quite complicated at that point. So, as part of preparing for this next phase, which is obviously to make it more permanent by fitting the ball links, etc., we need to make sure that we know where the central position is on the servo. So, on the transmitter, I've turned auxiliary two, as we can see here, to the three way switch, the elevation dual rate, which is up here, and by putting that to the zero position, we're able to ensure we know where central is. Now that's essentially gear down, that's center, and that's gear up. I've made sure that all my sub trims are at zero, and obviously I've made sure that, um, where are we? I've made sure that when we come up to our, when we come up to our servo setup here, that it's only at 100%, so governor is at 100%. Uh, or the governor, um, the governor channel, obviously, uh, which is channel seven. Uh, it's auxiliary three. Where's governor? Yeah. So that's a hundred percent there. So we know for a fact now that when we flick the elevator switch to the zero position, we're at minus one hundred percent, as you can see there, and when, or plus one hundred percent. And when we flick it to zero, we're in the middle. And, gut and and uh, all the way down, we're um, we're at uh, minus uh, 100%. This way, we're able to central our servos, which we'll have to do with each one of these, um, and we'll do that out of position, before we can start adding ball links and so on. Um, why am I doing it like this? To try and give myself the best chance of making sure that all three servos work together and that the throw isn't going to be off for each of them. Um, everyone will have their own method of doing it. This is this is the way I'm going to be doing it. So this is the servo. As you can see, I've not made it permanent or anything like that yet. Uh, this is the servo for the port uh, side pod. So all I need to do now really is disconnect this, connect this servo in. I if I can do this one-handed. Oh, yeah, I can. Uh, all we've got to do is connect this in one-handed. I'll put you down and come back. There you go, we're all connected. Um, we're all back, we're all back, we're all connected. Um, obviously that's gonna be sitting in like uh, that, in the side pod there. 
and we know that that should be central and it's not it's slightly off you can see that so a little bit of manual adjustment now i'll just take this arm off put this to center at 90 degrees to the servo and that will give us a much much better chance of all three of these servos being in sync again if i was to flick that ele um, elevation dual rate to zero we can see the servo arm move that's the middle and that's uh, the other 100 percent so that being the middle, we want that servo arm at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna change that. And I'll do likewise with the other one. And then um, start adding the ball links on, etc. Hello legends, a week later and here we are. And uh, we now have retracks uh, that are now working on the Bell 222. Beautiful. It's only taken me a week to do that. Um, yeah, lots of problems on route, and we are where we are now as a result of um, ignorance, luck, and tenaciousness. I just was not going to let go, and that's my advice to you. Um, yeah, it's all to do with the measurements um, that you need to make with regards to the servo throw, the length of the ball arm, and the control rod. Um, and slow and so on and so on. My only advice to you, because clearly I haven't documented that bit, is take your time, be methodical and logical. Do one at a time. Um, the other thing is that the servo um, reversing cable that I showed you at the very beginning uh, turned out that that was the wrong one. Uh, that's a servo cable for an entire channel uh, to be reversed, so I had to get a inline servo reverser. So. Uh, I'll show you that um, in a minute. Um, I'm really pleased that we're now completed it. Um, and uh, what do I think of the retract system? There, that's all I'm going to say. It looks good. And that's the most important thing. But, um, and we can't really have a Bell 222 without it, can we? Um, but there are much, much easier ways nowadays. You know, serverless retract systems um, are the way forward, I think. And um, having a retract system where each one has got its own servo just creates lots and lots of problems. But you know what? We are where we are and we fought through. So um, good luck to you. Right, let's have a walk around. Okay, well, hopefully you'll be able to um, see what's going on here. Um, so just for now, I've got a big extension, load of extension cables coming from Bella on the wall there. Um, and uh, when we actually start to fit Bella in here, we're not going to be using these. You know, we will end up uh, making our own servo cable um, and splicing them in nicely. Uh, but just for now, um, you can call this a bench test if you like. Um, you know, we've just used Y cables and so on. Um, uh, a note on the servo reversing cable I mentioned, this is what the inline servo reverser cable looks like. Um, so just one cable basically, but that's what you need in order to make sure that one of these servos is reversed. Um, hopefully you might be able to, uh, let's see whether I can focus on that bit there. Yeah, uh, let's see whether we can yeah, zoom in there. So you can see the, um, the servo there. Um, and you can see I've hot glued it around the outside, but I mean, it's all screwed in, etc. And on the other side is the arm that comes out. And that arm has to be perfectly at the right distance uh, for the throw. And of course, once you've got one, you've then got to do the other side. Um, and then eventually at the front, you can see here where I've replaced the ball ends um, with more robust, uh, a more robust solution. Um, it was it was a long process and there's no way of getting around it um the fact of the matter is it is a ball lake um it is it is difficult um to get them all to come up at the same time to get them all seated at exactly the right uh at the right distance from the fuselage that is difficult um and there's no way of getting around it it's just all about measurements and time and taking your time um, 
what I've learned this far is simply is simply this. The servos that I'm using are not the best servos, but they'll do. Um, and of course, we are going to be replacing these these uh, these these landing gear here, which uh, the new ones will simply slot in. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, of course, I can slow that down significantly more in the in the transmitter. Um, but when I do slow it down, because the servos are pretty pants, to be honest with you, the wheels judder as they come down. So this one's set, I think it's set to about two seconds or, yeah, two seconds, I think. So, um, yeah, there we go. Um, good. Very happy. So that's our retracks done. Um, and I'm content now um, to leave that and to move on to the rest of the project. Actually, I thought I'd show you on the underside so you can see what's going on. Here's the uh, the arm of the retract coming out. Where's my my pointer? Here's the arm of the retract coming out. Um, and on this side here, the ball link um, attached. I've got it facing. This is uh, one of the things that took a lot of time was to get the right sort of orientation for this in order that the clearance was good enough next to the housing of the retract. But you can see here this this ball joint here or this this capture for the for the uh, ball joint um, and it is really it's it's crap at the end of the day it's really really bad these are really bad um, and a mixture of making sure this is at the right angle uh, being able to secure these on which are diff which is difficult and the servo uh, end and the servo arm etc and the right distance from there to there, and then you've got the transmitter side of things as well, that is what is complicated, and that is what takes the time. Um, what I done essentially was I started off with one, I started off with one, and then worked my way around, um, and slowly but surely, you know, eventually get in there. So there we go, legends, that's the uh, end of the video and the end of the retract episode. Um, I really hope some of it is of use to you um, and uh, like I said you know I mean there's a lot that I haven't documented here purely and simply because it was a lot of trial and error um, and how do you record trial and error and more importantly what value can you bring from trial and error apart from the advice that I've given and I'll reiterate now take your time be methodical and logical and do one at a time um, don't give yourself a time frame. For me, it's taken me a week, a few hours a night. It might take you longer, it might take you less. I echo the words of John Salt, and I'll paraphrase him. They're a real bitch, and he's absolutely right. Um, but we are where we are now, and they all work, and that's great. Right, there we go. Um, I hope that was of some use to you. Um, till the next video then, in Project 6 uh, playlist, where we'll be doing, well, I don't know, the next part. Um, till then, see you later. Bye-bye.